Hello, this is the next video in a playlist titled General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And this is part three in a little mini series within that playlist. And this mini series deals with one way fixed effects ANOVAs. Again, we're in part three of 10. And here we're going to look at partitioning the sum of squares. So recall in matrix representation for the sum of squares in the multiple linear regression setting, we partition the total sum of squares into regression sum of squares and residual sum of squares, where H was the hat matrix, the perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of X, and J was the perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of 1. And so by analogy, you would think that we would have a similar partitioning in the design of experiments arena. And, but instead of using the hat matrix, we use M, which is also a perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of X. But in our setting, in the design of experiments setting, the, the design matrix is not full column rank. So we have to bring in the uh, generalized inverse method. So anyway, so we think it's going to be similar, and, and they are, but we're going to prove that. So results from a previous video, we showed that the, uh, the vector of treatment means can be represented by MY, where it's this, and then so there's N components with the mean of level 1, or treatment group 1, N components all equal to the treatment mean for group 2, etc. And the overall grand mean was represented by JY. So it's a constant vector of the, to the grand mean, the mean of all the Ys. So here's the theorem. The sum of squares can be broken into three pieces in matrix form represented like this and then in scalar form represented like this. So we're going to prove this two different ways. First proof, we're going to prove that this equals this, this piece equals this piece, and this piece equals this piece. And then we'll, we'll very easily show that, that this sum of squares can be broken up into that. And then we're done. But then we're also going to prove it another way, which I see a lot in books, and that's using purely scalar notation. So we'll, we'll prove that this holds. And then, of course, along with the first proof, then we know that they equal this. So let's, let's just jump in. So proof number one, the sum of squares total, which is represented by this. It's the, you know, the deviation of the data from the grand mean, you know, squared. That's for <clears throat> some, you know, overall values. But this can be thought of in vector form like this, where this is the data, this is the y's, and this is the grand mean vector. And so if we create two vectors and dot product, then we get this back. And now that's something that, if that's unclear to you, you need to pause the video and make sure that that's right in your mind. Now this vector, because it's transposed, is 1 by Na, and this is an Na by 1 vector, so the result is a number the sum of squares. But this right here can be thought of as um, this here is j times y, so we can write factor out of y same way here. Distribute the transpose and we get this, but i minus j is a perpendicular projection matrix, it's symmetric, so this transpose doesn't matter. And since it's a perpendicular projection matrix, it's idempotent, so this times this is itself, so we get this. So the sum of squares total is this piece here. Now the sum of squares treatment can be thought of as this, but notice that there are no J components, there's no J indexes. So if we took this in and then just summed over J from 1 to N, right, this, this piece here, we get N of them, and that's what we're saying here, so these two equal. But this can be thought of, we can put it in vector form, where this is the mean of the treatment means, and then this is minus the grand mean. And so this is, a, a, a well, with the transpose, a 1 by Na vector, and this is an Na by 1 vector. And then 
the treatment mean was M Y and this is J Y so when you write factor out of Y you get this piece same way here you get this distribute the transpose M minus J is uh, symmetric and item potent and more specifically a perpendicular projection matrix so this is just MJ and these do hold and if you're unclear about perpendicular projection matrices if you go into the backgrounds video I have a playlist called general linear models background and in there I have three or four videos on pr uh, projection matrices and I would strongly recommend you watching that and you know because instantly when I see this I see a perpendicular projection matrix orthogonal to the one vector but it lives in the calm space of X and that's what this is a projection matrix for. So the uh, sum of squares error can be thought of as this, the data points minus the group mean, you know, summed over all values squared. But we can put this in vector form. This is y, and then this is the treatment mean. But this is, um, the treatment mean was my. So we can write factor out of y and we get here. And then this becomes this. Distribute the transpose, we get this. I minus M, these are permanent projection matrices. They're symmetric, they're item potent. So we just get I minus M back and then we're done. So now all we need to do is show that we can break that sum into these two pieces and then we're done with the proof. So this is the sum of squares total, which we showed up here. Now if we add zero to this, the, the matrix in the middle, we add M and subtract M that's adding zero so it doesn't change it so let's do that but now let's kind of think of them as in two pieces this and this and then put the y's in and we get this but that's what we were saying right this is the sum of squares error and this is sum of squares treatment um, here and so we're done now the proof of number two is it's going to be uh, similar where we add a well-chosen zero. So sum of squares total is this. Let's add zero, which is we add the group mean and subtract the group means. Now we think of them in pairs. This is a pair and this is a pair and we square it. So we get this squared, which is this piece. We get this squared, which is this. And then we get this times this and this times this. So we get two of those. But now let's look at this piece over here first before we look at the whole expression again. So notice that there are no J components in this piece, this term here. So we can take it and, f and bring it outside of this sum. And that's what we do here. Now let's distribute this sum into this. So we have this sum here, and then we're going to put boxes around it to say it's separate from this. So then that's just yi dot, right? That's the, the dot means we're summed over j, right? And then when we take this in here, there's no j, so we get n of them. But y, yi dot bar is, the, is the, the mean, so we're dividing by n, so we can can't, those n's cancel. And then we get yi dot minus yi dot, which is zero. So that says this whole term is zero. So this drops out. So this comes down, and then this comes down. But that's what we were calling the sum of squares treatment and sum of squares error. And so we're finished. Now, I want to look at the expectation of these quadratic forms and then the distribution of properties, and then we're finished. So the uh, mean of sum of squares total which is y, you know, uh, y transpose i, j, y. Now the formula for um, the expected value of a quadratic form, I have a playlist called um, mean and variance, and actually I think covariance of quadratic forms. And we're using the formula that was in there exactly. So it becomes the trace of this matrix times the variance of y plus the mean of y times that variance times the mean of y. Don't forget that transpose. That's the formula that we're going to use three times. Now the variance of y is um, sigma squared i and then sigma squared come out front the i times that we just get this. 
X beta, that comes down, this comes down. Um, here the trace of this is, uh, this is an Na by Na vector, so it's, the trace is Na, you know, we're adding one Na times. Tra uh, the trace of J is one. Um, here, this is perpendicular projection matrix, so we can take it times itself, and then it's symmetric, so we can put a transpose, but then we back it, transpose it, and we get this, and then this comes over here. Now, so this comes down, and then this piece becomes this, and where the uh, tau b dot bar is the mean of all the taus, the treatment effects. Now, going from here to here, we will... Um, that'll be the next video driving that derivation but look at this so we have this and, and I'd like to point out this quantity here it, it is what's called positive semi-definite it's zero or more always and that's because this is a uh, item potent matrix so it has to, it's positive semi-definite and that'll come back in a couple of videos all right so let's move on to the next one so this uh, expected value of sum of squares treatment, and that was, I wish I would have written it, uh, MJ, right? So that is this, because I wrote it in quadratic form up here, but I didn't here, right? Dang it. So then it becomes the trace of this matrix times the variance, and you're going to get this, times the mean, times this, uh, matrix in the middle times this. Now this comes down. This derivation we'll, we'll put off to the next video. The expected value of the sum of squares error is this is the sum of squares error. So then it becomes the trace of I minus M times the variance of Y and we get this. The mean of Y times that matrix mean of Y. Well I minus M is actually a perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement space of the column space of x. So x times this is zero, so this drops out. And the expected value of the sum of squares errors becomes this. And actually that's a quick way to create an unbiased estimate for the sum of squares error, is you divide that over and then the expected value of that, that uh, fraction becomes an unbiased estimate for sigma squared. Now the, sum, uh, the distributional properties of these sum of squares is this. We assume that the error terms are normally distributed. And then if we divide by sigma, not sigma squared, just sigma, then it becomes this, um, and that's a sigma, dang it. And then 1 over sigma y is distributed multivariate normal with this. Then we know that the sum of squares total based upon, I have a, a video called distributional distribution of quadratic forms and then so we take the quadratic form and then it instantly becomes this non-central chi-squared and, we, and we'll probably do more with this later and then the sum of squares treatment becomes this non-central chi-squared and notice that these are each positive semi-definite because these are idempotent matrices. The sum of squares error becomes a central chi-square distribution. And again, see the distribution of quadratic forms for more detail. But that's all I have for this video. And hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.